Hi guys, welcome back again to Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. Um, thank you so much for viewing in. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be here, so thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be making some pasta. We're going to be making some creamy chicken, mushroom, and spinach pasta. So to start off with, we have some few ingredients here which I'm going to walk you guys through. We're going to have some chicken. I'm going to add some chicken into the pasta. So we're having some chicken. We've got some different pastas which I'm going to go through with you guys in just a minute. But the type we're using is actually the penne pasta. And then we've got our cheeses, the two of them. So for the two cheeses, I've got parmesan. One is just fresh and then one is just dry. And then I've got some black pepper as well as some salt. And then I've got my leaves here, which is spinach as well as the pasta I've mentioned we're going to be using and the mushroom. Then we've got some cream, some olive oil, and of course, some parsley. So yes, that's what we're going to be using. And we're going to go on a tiny little break. When you guys come back, I'm going to walk through the steps with you and we're going to get cooking. So see you in a little bit. Hi guys, welcome back again to Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. If you just tuned in, I mentioned earlier we're making some creamy chicken and mushroom spinach pasta. So I walked you guys through the ingredients and to start off with, I'm going to start with our spinach. What I'm going to do with the spinach here is that I'm going to just blanch it. And what blanching means is when you pre-cook your vegetables so that they retain the color. And usually when you blanch your vegetables, they can stay in the fridge longer because you can refrigerate them, uh, meaning you can actually freeze them. So that's like a good tip. If you've bought a lot of vegetables and you don't know what to do with them, just take them, blanch them, put them in the freezer, and you're good to go when you're ready to use them. So what I've done here is just my regular spinach that I've removed from the stem. So I have one here to show you what I did. So just take it off from the stem. It's not complicated. Then throw that in the bin. And then we're going to get our water. I have some water here that I've been putting to start our boiling process because I want it to be ready for you guys. So we're going to start off with the water. I'm just going to add it to add the heat. So throw in your spinach. Usually you can add some seasoning if you want to, but I'm not going to. And then I'm going to heat this one up so then we can add the pasta in here. Now if you're at home and you have a kettle, then you can use that. But since I don't have one, this is what I'm using. So it's an easy way. We're preheating our water. So you have to know your next step in advance when you're cooking. Okay, so that is hot. We're going to let that heat up now. And then for this, our spinach now, we're just going to push this in so that all the leaves are submerged in the water. And then while that is going on, in the meantime, I'm going to set this aside. And then I'm going to get the pasta. So for those who are not familiar, we've got some different types of pastas. So I don't want to overcomplicate it for you. So what we have here are different types. What I'm using is the penne pasta. And the penne pasta just looks like a tube. Then we've got the elbow pasta, or other words known as the macaroni pasta, which you can use now for things like um, macaroni, of course, and like a pasta bake, which you'd put in the oven. And then we've got our tagliatelle pasta. Now the tagliatelle is just a nice, it's got a nice velvety, smooth, soft texture to it when you cook it. And it's very nice and soft, like I've mentioned, yes. And most times it comes wrapped up like this. And then we've got uh, our spirali pasta here, or also known as fusilli. This one is actually fusilli. And usually the difference between the spirali and uh, the fusilli is that the fusilli is just a little bit more compact in terms of its uh, spiral shape in terms of the curls. So those are the, part, the different pastas I had to show you. Of course, there's a lot more. There's like the cannelloni pasta. There's like the lasagna kind of pasta. So there's lots more, but I just need to give you guys a little bit of a guideline so you are aware of the different types of pastas. And of course, it's a regular one. We, we use here a lot like in Kenya, like the spaghetti one, which is just the long, thin pasta. So let me just check on my water here. I've reduced the heat. 
So for the spinach, you just want it to cook for about a minute. You don't cook it longer than that. That's the whole point of blanching. Like I've, me I've mentioned, it's just a way of pre-cooking. So I'm going to add a bit of salt to the water that's now going to have my pasta. Just a little bit of salt. Then I'm going to add some oil. Now the oil will just help your pasta not to stick. So a bit of oil, and then I'm just going to let that come to a boiling point and set this aside. Then now I'm going to add our pasta, which I've mentioned is the penne type of pasta. Again, remember to check on your spinach. So your spinach, you don't want it to overcook. I'm just blanching it like I've mentioned. And when you're blanching your spinach, you just want it to get soft. So that's what I'm looking for. So it's about a minute, two minutes once it's soft. And you'll tell once it's soft because it starts to break off easily like it is. So that to me is good enough. I'm going to set this aside now. So you set it aside and then drain it and then you put it in cold water. So I have my water that's already waiting for me here. So this is the water I'm going, sorry. This is the water I'm going to add it into. This is cold water. And what I'm going to do is just now drain it and then I'm going to get back to the water that's already boiling. So once you're done with your draining, you can get your colander and then now put in the remaining pasta and then now place it inside the cold water. So this is what you're left with. So you want your pasta to get cool and so after it's cool then I'm going to remove it and then I'm going to squeeze off the water which I'm going to show you in just a minute. So in the meantime I'm going to add some of the pasta inside and then now we can switch this off because we no longer need it. I could just move this here so we can use this other space. Okay, so that's going on great. Get my spoon, or rather fork, do a little stirring in here to make sure all the pasta is submerged, submerged nicely. <laughs> okay, so I'm just putting this stuff aside, the utensils, of course, and one spinach got away from me. So like I said, you want to put your spinach in the cold water, the spinach that now we are blanching. And what all I've said blanching is, it's a way of pre-cooking your vegetables so they can retain their nice color and so that you can freeze them later. So once that's cool, and usually if your water is um, not cold enough, then usually you'll drain it, then you add some more water until your vegetables are like cold. So mine are. So I'm going to set this aside. So pour off the water and then squeeze out the extra water from your spinach and you get a very small ball as you all know spinach actually tends to shrink so always remember that when you're preparing your spinach so if you have a lot of pork coming for lunch or dinner just make sure you have the right amount so once that's done I've squeezed it off but if you look closely you'll notice that my spinach is not all the way dry there's still some moisture if I squeeze you can still see there's some water so you want to make sure you've squeezed it, but it's not so dry that it's going to be extremely dry in your food. So just enough that most of the extra water has been squeezed out. So we're going to now chop. And like I mentioned, you get a really nice color. And what happens by you blanching, your spinach does not um, lose some of the green color in the water or in the liquid that it is you're going to be cooking it in. As you notice, that tends to happen a lot with spinach. You'll be making it, then you'll notice whatever you are making, maybe you are making a nice creamy sauce and stand suddenly from the nice white color to green. That's most times because you didn't blanch your spinach and so the water will just start squeezing out from the natural juices of the spinach. So I'm going to set that aside and then move on to something else. So our first step is done and it was very easy. Just going to wash my hands. Okay, then I just want to clear my board just a little bit so we can move on to the next item. Okay, so I'm going to get chopping with my garlic. And my mushrooms are already chopped. Now this is a good recipe to actually use um, mushrooms if you're not a huge fan of mushrooms because I'm not using too much mushrooms. So it's just somewhere good to get started. So I'm going to get my garlic and I'm a huge fan of garlic so I'm going to use two cloves. If you don't like garlic as much then you can use less of course. 
Then I'm just going to bash it and this just helps loosen up the skin a little bit so that you don't spend all your time actually trying to peel the garlic. And you see how easily that came off. It's pretty fast and efficient. So we're just going to go ahead and just start our chopping. Now I love chopping garlic, but if you don't like chopping garlic, you can definitely just grate it if you want to. Or by all means, you can buy the store-bought one that's already minced for you. So you've got quite a few options. Or you can also get a blender at home and then just mince it yourself. So there are a few options here and there. If you find yourself just not being a fan of the whole smell of garlic. But I just love it. It's just something about it. It smells really nice and fragrant. Okay, so my garlic is... Um, chopped to the consistency I want it. So this is almost a fine chop but not too fine. So I'm just going to place this aside and then I'm going to stir my pasta. Again I like to keep an eye on everything I'm cooking. Always remember that when you're in the kitchen. So I'm going to get my fork and then just check on my pasta. I'm just stirring it in. Okay, it's fine. So I'm going to place this aside, my garlic, and then I'm going to move on to my chicken. And for this, I'll use the same board because it's the same food. But of course, you want to make sure that if you're cutting uh, your raw cooked food or your vegetables and you're not using the same food. That's why if you noticed, I had already pre-cut my mushrooms. I've just cut my garlic and I've cut the spinach because then I don't want to use the same board. Now I can use it because I'm not cutting anything else. And if I do tend to cut another vegetable, then I'll have to flip it. So you always have to remember that for cross-contamination because it's important. Okay, so we're going to just cut our chicken into slices. And if you feel like they're too long, you can always just cut them into half again. So I'll just cut that into half, then continue with my slices. And then once your chicken is cut, we're going to season this, not with much. Go through the pieces you feel might look a little bit too big. Because we want them to be a nice bite size and I want my chicken to cook very quickly. This is a very fast recipe. We don't want to spend all the time in the kitchen. So this when you've come and you're tired and you don't want to just be in the kitchen cooking, you want to eat, maybe go to bed or just have a simple quick dinner with your family. So it's one of those. Okay, so we're going to put some oil in our pan. There's actually some water in there. So always make sure you start off on a dry pan. Alternatively, you can just heat this up until the water evaporates, or you can just wipe it like I've done, and then now heat your pan. So now it's time to heat our pan. Okay. Then add some olive oil. Some nice olive oil. I love using olive oil because I love the aroma it gives. So not too much. Then we're going to season our chicken now with some salt and some black pepper. You could add other seasonings if you want to this, of course, like some garlic powder, which I'm not going to because I have the fresh garlic. You could also add... Um, cayenne pepper, that's a bit of chili, a bit of some paprika, some extra herbs, some extra dry herbs, like maybe basil if you wanted. So you can add a couple of things. So a bit of black pepper. I'm being generous because I like black pepper. But of course, if you don't like black pepper, then just use less of it. And then a bit of salt, of course, for the seasoning. And then place this aside. Then now we're just going to go ahead and mix, mix, mix. So make sure all your chicken is nice and massaged and all the spices are inside your chicken. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to swirl our pan. I'm just going to get the tissue I used to wipe the pan, wipe my hands and then swirl it. The swirling is just to help the oil spread evenly inside the pan. So once that's done, you now add your chicken. And you want the sizzle always. Whenever you're frying something, make sure you want the sizzle. And always make sure not to crowd your pan, especially if you're frying, because you end up not browning your meat nicely. And what you get is like, kind of like a gray hue to your meat, which you're not looking for. So always try and make sure you're actually stewing it. I mean, you're not stewing it, you're actually frying it. So I'm going to get my 
wooden spoon. So I'm just making sure that each piece of meat is actually well placed in the pan so it can actually get a nice brown color. And in the meantime, I'm going to make sure everything I need is ready, which it is. We're going to check on our pasta. Like I mentioned, it's important that you remember to check on everything that's going around you in the kitchen. You don't want to abandon one thing. So always be alert. So pasta does not take that long to cook. Depending on the packet instructions, it should be something from 10 minutes or 8 minutes to about 12 or so minutes. So I'm going to check on my pasta. But I can tell it's not where I want it. And usually, personally, I just like to taste my pasta to the consistency that I personally want it. So I'm going to flip this. Don't worry about the flames, that's because of the oil. And you see the brown color I'm talking about, this is exactly what I'm talking about. A nice, beautiful brown color to your chicken. So like I mentioned, you don't start off on high heat. But if you feel your heat is too high, then again, just reduce it. I'm just trying to turn the pieces that have not turned, so that everything can, can cook evenly and have a nice golden color to it. Okay, so there we go. Our chicken is looking good. So at this stage, we can actually add our garlic, which is why I had already pre-chopped it. You know, like I mentioned, I love garlic. If you like less garlic, use less garlic. So we're going to add a bit of our garlic, and then we're going to saute that. We're going to add our mushrooms, then the spinach and the cream. And then at that time, we're going to add now the pasta once it's ready. And for the pasta, you don't want to overcook it because it's also going to keep cooking here. You want your pasta to have a little bit of a bite, which is al dente. So I'm just going to stir, sorry, toss this. Again, you can just use the wooden spoon to toss. I just like tossing with the pan because I'm used to it as a chef. But if you're not used to, just use the wooden spoon. So toss some more. And you can just practice this at home. It's not too difficult. All you do is just tilt the pan down and then flip it up upwards. So you tilt it down, then flip up. Tilt it down and then flip up. Okay? So that's just a small tip you can try at home. So once your garlic is fragrant and not too brown, I don't want it to be completely brown, you add your mushrooms. And then we're just going to toss this some more. And you have to be very careful at this stage not to burn your garlic. Because then it's going to lose the nice flavorful flavor that it has. Again, check on your pasta. I'm going to set it aside. Just check on it. See if it's where I want it to be. Or leave it for a minute or so. So about a minute or two. Toss again. Okay, that's good enough. So for this, I'm not going to add my cream in there. Then I'll add my spinach later because the spinach is already cooked. So all I'm doing is just putting it in to combine the flavors. So toss some more. Now at this stage, you can actually reduce the heat because as you can see, the mushrooms have started getting soft and they don't take long. That's been about a minute. So just reduce the heat. Because now your chicken is nicely brown, your mushrooms are getting nice and soft and brown, as you can see them. Again, this could be a dish by itself if you wanted to. We're going to add some cream. So we're being very generous with the cream here, because like I mentioned, it's a creamy chicken, mushroom, and spinach dish. So you have, it has to be quite creamy. So check on my pasta, put that aside. Then stir here. Then remember I had seasoned my chicken. So when I do decide to, to season here, it's going to be on the, on, on, on the lower side because I don't want to overdo it. So check on my pasta. And I feel like my pasta is where I want it to be. So I'm going to just cut it. Taste it. about like a minute then I'm going to add it here and what I like about this style of cooking is that I don't have to drain the pasta 
I'm going to add it directly into my sauce. You see my sauce has started to thicken nicely. I'm just going to clear some of the stuff. So as to give you a better picture. As I wait for the pasta. And then we're going to now add the spinach. Because like I mentioned, the spinach is already cooked. So there's not much you're doing to it. And with the spinach, if you had the spinach, uh, it was already frozen, like I mentioned, you could uh, take this and then now just bag it in a Ziploc bag and then put it in the freezer and use for later. All you'll have to do is just take it out when it's frozen and just throw it in whatever t dish you want to, because it's going to thaw in the dish. You don't have to wait for it. So my pasta is good enough. I'm going to just switch that off. Take out all the spinach. I don't want to waste anything. I'm going to wash my knife as well in case I need it. Okay. Then now it's time to stir. You always want to check as you're going. So you see this, the cream has actually evaporated most of it. So you want to add some more. So we're going to add some more. Which is why I mentioned you have to be very generous with the cream. And then at this stage, we're going to add our pasta. So I'm just going to get a spoon that is easy to scoop with, that is going to leave the water. And then we're going to add it here. And at this stage, you could actually use some of the pasta water to actually thicken your sauce. And like I mentioned, your pasta is still going to keep cooking in this um, creamy sauce that we're making. So we're leaving nothing to waste. And then now we're just going to toss this gently, not to break our pasta. So very gently. And already our dish looks nice and creamy. Then remember I seasoned very low. Because like I mentioned to you, there's seasoning in the water. If you remember, we added some salt. And then there's also seasoning in the chicken. And what that is going to do in the cream, it's going to release its um, the juices. So you want to be very careful with the seasoning. So I'm going to taste it at this point of time and see what to add. So I'll add a bit more pepper and a bit of salt, of course. But you can actually taste the seasoning as it is because garlic by itself has its own flavors. So it gives its own natural sweetness and of course saltiness. So add a bit of salt. So anytime you're making a dish that you've pre-seasoned, always make sure to put your seasoning on the lower side and just check it just before it's ready to go you don't want to over season you can always take out something you can always add something but you can't take it out and then i'm going to add some more cream again because i mentioned this is a creamy pasta dish so our dish is looking really good and creamy so i'm just going to let this um cook for about a minute so this did not take us long at all and that's about done so I'm going to put my cream here, stand by in case I need to add some more, but it doesn't look like I need to. And then to finish off, we're going to finish off with some parsley. So we're going to go on a short break and then I'm going to tidy up the area so that when you guys come back, we're going to get plating, add a bit of parsley, and it's going to be a wrap. So see you guys in a little bit after the break. Welcome back to Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. If you just tuned in, we're making some pasta today. We're making some creamy chicken, mushroom, and spinach pasta. So quite a lot going on. You could actually make this dish a vegetarian if you wanted to and just omit the chicken. So if you just came back, we're actually done with the cooking. We finished off with the cream and let that finish cooking for about a minute or two. So now I'm going to just go ahead and plate. And like I mentioned, if you've got some pasta water, always try and retain it before you finish your cooking. As you can see, my um, mixture is quite nice and creamy. 
but usually if you want to add more cream you can or you can use the pasta water like i mentioned it's always good to save some because what the pasta water will do will still help um, retain the thickness of your sauce without it being too dilute so i usually like to just add just a little bit just make sure that my pasta is still nice and moist as we go on but you can alternatively still just finish off with the cream whichever one is fine so I'm just going to mix this to make sure everything is well mixed. And as you can see, it's really nice and creamy. Yes, this is good. So we're going to plate that and then just top of cream just a little bit. And then we're just going to go ahead and start our plating. So if you're a vegetarian, again, just remember you can make this dish without the chicken. So we're going to serve ourselves a nice big hearty filling. So it's a nice simple dish that you could actually have at home with your family or as a date night or you could cook for yourself so because it's very simple as you saw so there we are and then try and top the chicken right at the center as much as you can okay Just going to add some more pieces and our dish is looking pretty good already and a bit more of the spinach as i mentioned it's a creamy chicken and mushroom dish then we're going to add some of the parsley and finish off with the herbs so i'm just going to wipe my hands off and then wipe your plate if you happen to notice that um your border is not as clear as you'd want it to be all you have to do is just wipe that and it's as good as new there you are so we're going to get some of our herbs and then just chop this up. What I'm using is parsley. You could use basil if you wanted as well. So get your parsley and then just roughly chop this. So not too much, just a little bit, which we're just going to throw around our plates as a garnish. We're just going to get this and then we're just going to sprinkle it around. And then we're going to get some of the cheeses. So the cheese I mentioned I'm using, I'm using Parmesan, Parmesan, and I'm also using dry Parmesan. Yes, so for the dry and for the, this is the, sorry, <laughs> this is actually the fresh one, this is the dry one. The dry one is just a pre-bought, so it's from the stores, and then the fresh one is I bought my own parmesan and then i grated it myself and usually depending like on the age so the dry one usually means that it's been out like for a very long time so it's very dry in comparison with the moisture and most times they've like taken out the moisture when you buy it from the store so it's not as wet if you look at it so you can go with whichever option you prefer so i'm just going with both for the nice salty flavor so again just try and remember that you do not want to over season like i mentioned and again always remember that cheese does have a very salty taste to it so you want to season this again not too much on the salt because we're going to add some cheese but if you're not going to add some cheese then that's absolutely up to you so our dish is good enough let me just going to take this back there and that's it we're actually done you could just top it off with a little sprig of parsley. There we are. And that's our dish for you. So don't worry about the herbs on the side, on the plate. They're just there for decoration. So that's our pasta dish for you today. So like I mentioned, today we're actually making some nice creamy chicken and mushroom pasta. If you're a fan of pasta and so this was very fast to do it did not take us a very long time to do it so it's something i'm just trying to get you guys to cook your pasta in a different way if you're used to making it in the tomato sauce try using it in cream or if you're not used to the cream you could actually just use some flour and some water instead of using cream so always try and make sure that you can adapt the food you're, you're cooking to suit your own taste buds if you don't have certain ingredients like the mushrooms you don't have to use them take them out if you don't have some ingredients like um perhaps the the parsley that I use, use basil, or if you wanted to use other vegetables like broccoli, add them in. So just make the dish your own. So other than that, that's it for today, you guys. So this has been really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you'll tune in again to another dinner guide with me. I'm your host again, Shina Amario. Please remember to join us on social media. We're on Facebook, Brand Plus TV, so make sure you follow us. So it's been a pleasure. Thanks. See you guys another time. Bye.